We now wish to remind you of the pleural membranes. You should have learned about pleural membranes in anatomy. There are two of them. There is the so-called parietal pleural membrane, which is a simple squamous epithelial membrane attached to the inside wall of your chest. Just like I have a lining on the inside of my coat, there is a simple squamous epithelial membrane attached to the inside wall of the chest called the parietal pleural membrane. And there is a visceral pleural membrane that adheres to the surface of the lungs. Now these are called serous membranes because they secrete what I like to call a slippery serous fluid, a slippery serous fluid. That's what we wrote right here. Now the purpose of this fluid secreting by, secreted by these two membranes is that this fluid acts to create a cohesion or attraction between these two membranes so they tend to stick to one another. This is actually what keeps your lungs inflated by having them indirectly attached to the chest wall. This is a picture on page 279. Uh, we can see the parietal pleural membrane. It is attached to the inside chest wall. We see the visceral pleural membrane, which is attached to the outer surface of the lung. They both secrete a slippery serous fluid that fills up a thin space between these two membranes. That thin space filled with the fluid is called the pleural cavity. The pressure inside this pleural cavity is referred to as the intrapleural pressure or intrathoracic pressure. We can see these terms right below, intrapleural or intrathoracic pressure. Because of the elastic nature of the lungs, the lungs are trying, just like a balloon, to collapse. I've drawn a picture of that right here. So the elastic nature of a lung is very much like the elastic nature of a balloon. The elastic nature of the lungs is such that it wants to let the air out and collapse in the process. So that's the nature of the lungs. In contrast, the chest wall actually wants to expand. So we actually have the lungs trying to collapse and the outer chest wall is trying to expand. So these two structures are trying to pull away from one another. That actually creates a subatmospheric pressure in the pleural cavity. That's why we wrote down below that the tendency of the balloon-like lungs to collapse and pull away from the chest wall will normally create a subatmospheric or negative intrapleural pressure. To help you better understand this concept, let's consider the following fancy experiment. I have two glass slides right here. And what I'm going to do is place a little bit of water on the slides. I'm placing some water on the slides. All right? And so I'm, I've got water on this slide. I'm going to put this slide right on top of it. And because of the water or fluid between the glass slides, they adhere to one another. This is called cohesion. I'm actually holding the top slide right now. The bottom slide is underneath. So the bottom slide is actually adhering to the top slide. I'll pull it away. All right? But they actually stick to one another. That's what's good. They'll glide over one another, but they stick. There, I'm pulling it away, but I'm actually holding the top slide. All right, so you'd say, what's the point of that? We mentioned that there is cohesion between these two slippery membranes. The parietal pleural membrane and the visceral pleural membrane both secrete fluid, and that fluid is found between those two membranes. Very similar to how right between these two glass slides is fluid. As a result, these two slides adhere or stick to one another. As a result of this fluid, these two membranes stick or adhere to one another. There is cohesion between them. Let's imagine that if I were to try to push these two slides together, if I take these two slides and push them together, what do you think is happening to the pressure between those slides? 
And the answer is the pressure between the two slides increases if I push the two slides together. Well, what do you think happens if I try to pull these slides apart? If I try to pull them apart, and yes, I can pull them apart, but what if I just try to gently pull them apart without actually doing so? What do you think is happening to the pressure between the two slides? And the answer is the pressure is actually decreasing. Look, it's very simple. If you push the two slides together, that increases the pressure between the slides. If I try to pull the slides apart, that decreases the pressure between the slides. So in a similar fashion, what's normally going on is the lung and the chest wall are trying to pull apart. That lowers the pressure between the lung and the chest wall. In other words, it lowers the pressure in the pleural cavity. So normally, because the lung and the chest wall are trying to pull in opposite directions and pull away from each other, that creates a subatmospheric or negative intrapleural pressure. That's what we wrote down here. The tendency of the balloon-like lungs to collapse and pull away from the chest wall creates a subatmospheric or negative intrapleural pressure. So here I've even made a picture of imagining trying to pull these, uh, push the slides together or pull them apart. Now, what happens with a Valsalva maneuver? We wrote on the top of page 280 that during a forced exhalation or Valsalva maneuver, this causes the pressure in the pleural cavity to actually increase. All right, so again, what's, what's our analogy? Pushing the slide, one slide against the other, is going to increase the pressure between the slides. So in a Valsalva maneuver, one is forcefully exhaling. In a Valsalva maneuver, one forcefully contracts the chest wall and pushes the chest wall down onto the lungs. Pushing the chest wall down onto the lungs is similar to pushing one slide against another slide. That increases the pressure between them, and in this case, increases the pressure in the pleural cavity, causing an uh, causing a greater than atmospheric or positive intrapleural pressure. What are examples of Valsalva maneuvers? We've described that the following as Valsalva maneuvers when one forcefully exhales and push it. You are actually contracting your respiratory muscles, pushing your chest wall down against the lungs to force the air to come out. Also, a cough or a sneeze, in both cases, they are forced uh, exhalations. Uh, where the air is either directed out the mouth, uh, mouth or the nose. In the case of vomiting, this is where there is a tightening of these muscles against a closed glottis, preventing the air from coming out, but in this case causing the contents of the stomach to be pushed up and out, again due to the increase in intrathoracic and intra-abdominal pressure. Uh, in the case of straining during uh, uh, having a bowel movement, if one is a bit constipated during defecation and one is straining and contracting those uh, uh, chest and abdominal muscles, that increases the intrathoracic and intraabdominal pressures. Uh, in this case, to push the stool out of the body uh, during a, a bowel movement. And this also occurs during pushing during childbirth, where a woman bears down increasing the intrathoracic and intra-abdominal pressure, in this case, to push the baby out the birth canal. Pleurisy or uh, pleuritis is an inflammation or infection of the pleural membranes. And uh, then we've described what a pneumothorax or a hemothorax uh, are. This is simply where uh, either air in the case of a pneumothorax or blood, in the case of a hemothorax, uh, enters the pleural cavity. Now, anytime something enters that pleural cavity, which is normally just supposed to have a thin film of fluid between them, the result is that the lung pulls away from the chest wall, and there is either partial or complete collapse of the lung. In order to reinflate the lung, they will insert a syringe with a needle attached, they will insert the needle into the pleural cavity. They will aspirate up, drawing up on the syringe and drawing air
from the pleural cavity into the syringe. As the air is drawn up into the syringe, it will tend to cause the lung to reattach to the chest wall. As you remove that air, uh, then there is just that return of the cohesion between the visceral and parietal pleural membranes. Now we did indicate that whenever there is partial or complete collapse of the lung, the result is a decrease in TLC. TLC in this case does not mean tender loving care, it means total lung capacity. The lung capacity is reduced if uh, there is partial collapse of the lung. I now want to define three pressures that we are going to be discussing when we talk about pulmonary ventilation, the process of inhaling and exhaling. The first of these is atmospheric pressure. Now, atmospheric pressure at sea level is, of course, 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 torr. But in the world of respiratory physiology, we normally assume that since atmospheric pressure is not changing, we designate it as zero. So it's assumed to be zero. The second pressure we've been talking about, the intrapleural pressure, also known as the intrathoracic pressure. That's the pressure recorded in the intrapleural cavity between the parietal and visceral pleural membranes. As we've described, intrapleural pressure is normally subatmospheric or negative, reflecting the fact that the lungs are elastically trying to collapse, and uh, the chest cavity is actually trying to expand, creating a subatmospheric pressure or negative pressure in the intrapleural cavity. However, any time the chest is forcefully compressed down upon the lungs, that actually causes the intrapleural pressure or intrathoracic pressure to actually become higher than atmospheric. So that happens with a forced expiration, and it happens with valsalva maneuvers where there is a forcing of the chest wall down upon the lungs, commonly with a closed glottis. The third pressure we wish to define is the so-called alveolar or intrapulmonary pressure. The alveolar pressure is the pressure in the alveoli. It's also called intrapulmonary, the pressure within the lungs. We will be learning that when the uh, chest is enlarged uh, using your respiratory muscles, that causes a decrease in the uh, alveolar or intrapulmonary pressure. When you relax the respiratory muscles and chest uh, decreases in size, that causes an increase in the alveolar or intrapulmonary pressure. We're going to be using these three pressures to describe pulmonary ventilation, the process by which air is sucked into the lungs and air is blown out.